Hey guys, how you doing? Happy Monday. It's Big John with J Custom Bills. I'm getting ready to, I'm doing the final steps on my brother-in-law's 2013 soft tail. Man, it's real important that you double check everything, especially on the torquing of the wheels, the brakes, the handlebars, the controls, the mirrors, just everything, everything, just the foot pedals, the anything to do with the controls, make sure all your fluids are topped off, make sure they're good, make sure you have no leaks, Make sure if you take your floorboards off that you tighten them up. You don't want a floorboard uh, getting loose and, and, and falling on you in your ride, and that could cause a real bad accident. And uh, so I'm just doing a once over on this bike, and I am going to change the battery for him. I'm going to put a brand new battery in here. I've been keeping this one on the tender. I don't know how old it is, maybe two years old or whatever, but it's set for a long time, and it's just not cranking the way it should. So we're gonna swap that out real quick and I'm gonna show you guys a really quick tip because it's it's kind of tight in there and a lot of people struggle with getting their hands in there and getting the batteries, they smash their fingers and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go over that with you guys really quick. So stand by. So this battery's not too bad, right? I mean, I could, still kind of tight i can kind of get my fingers in there and move it out this one's not too bad it's not too heavy but these batteries have little uh little hooks on the side and you got to be careful because it's close to the metal so what a lot of people do is they'll get like a leather belt that's old or even a um some kind of a, a belt that's, you know, just any kind of belt really that's going to be able to hold the weight because some of these bigger batteries are really heavy. So what people do is they like poke a hole or drill a small hole through it. And then they use these bolts to be able to bolt the strap down, you know, and, you know, you don't have to have it that long, you know, just there is fine. I don't know if some people keep them really long, but that's good right there because the closer you are, the better it is to, to actually pulling it out. And so they end up lifting it out. I don't have anything like that. So what I do is I use one of these rubber uh, bungee cords, right? And so this one's not that long. I don't know. It's probably like maybe a foot and a half. And so what I do is I just stick these through the holes on the battery. But, you know, you got to worry about, you know, it's powder coated. So, I mean, as long as you don't touch any metal, you're fine. I've used this thing dozens of times and I've never arced anything, but <clears throat> you can always throw tape over this to, you know, make sure that you don't conduct anything or get any sparks or blow the battery up or anything like that. I've seen that happen too. So not with this, but I've seen people, you know, arc their batteries and it's, it's pretty damn scary. The bigger the battery, the more voltage, the scarier it is. So anyways, let me tape this thing up and we'll get right back to you. You get the new battery. And you could do the same thing, right? Just got to move it over and slide it down. Like I said, these aren't too bad. Make sure you got it down in there even. Is it even? It should be, but if you can't see, you can get your flashlight and yes, it's, it's perfectly even in there. Just feels like it's a little bit taller. Hang on one second, guys. <sighs> yeah, it's fine. Okay, so you just pull these little guys off. There you go, they're just little covers. This one actually has the holes on the sides where you have to put the little bolt in. It should come with the kit and it does. So what it does is it comes with the two new screws, which are very long. It comes with two long ones and two short ones. The long ones are if you have a bunch of speakers, um, not speakers, you have amps and you have extra stuff that you need to put onto the positive and the negative. And of course the short ones. These are the spacers you can also use for the long ones. And then it comes with the little, the little, uh, the little nut square nuts that fit inside of the holes right there. I'll show you guys that real quick as well. So this is what I'm going to use right here. Um, these are the new, the new bolts and the new nuts. These nuts just kind of slide in here. Sometimes they just fit into the slots there. 
and you normally have to get them in from the outside just be careful because you can drop them so i try to use a small magnet like this you could just get it like that and it slides in from the outside hold it with your finger and it's in there now what i'm going to do is i'm going to end up using the uh the screws that i had originally on here and they should work out just fine so you put the bolt in there so i'm not blocking you guys and once you start again you could use your phillips screwdriver just to make sure that it grabs that nut down there you could fill it down below and what a lot of people do is i already cleaned these cables and these connectors you want to make sure it fits on there tight and it does I'm gonna grab my 10 millimeter wrench again and tighten this one up. And you want you want to hold the cable so it doesn't twist. And the most important thing is to make sure that it's really tight because you don't want to have a loose connection. Don't put it so tight to where you're gonna end up breaking anything or stripping anything on there. I mean it's it's you could tighten it up. And another thing that you should do that I should have done is you want to get a nice little scratch. I'm going to take that one back off. So I cleaned these connections already, but it doesn't hurt to go over them again because you want to have the best connection you can have possible, right? So I'm going to leave that one off really quick. I'm going to take this one back off and then I'm going to clean the top of the battery terminal before I put it back on. You know, guys, just want to share this with you guys really quick my wife and i it was our our 16th anniversary weekend and the first two days were okay but then things things got kind of rough because for those of you that have been following my channel for a while you'll know that leo's been with us since uh, may of last year 2023 get those nice and clean so you get a good connection so Leo's been with us since uh, since uh, 20, May of 2023, right? So it's been a year that he's been with us. And we love him. He's an awesome dog. He could be a brat sometimes. You know, he's just really spoiled because we had been without a dog for four years, three or four years. And, you know, my wife fell in love with him instantly. So we're gonna tighten this back up. Like I said, you wanna hold this and then give that some really good turns and just to where it stops, you just wanna get it nice and tight on there. Make sure that it's, cause sometimes if these bolts are too long, you won't really get tight on there. You have to end up putting washers or spacers, but that that's actually pretty good right there. So our, uh, our puppies have, uh, Leo's super, super jealous, right? You can see the small arcing. So Leo and uh, Loki got along really good. And once I started getting, let me back up a little bit. Once I started getting super close to Leo, which took a long time. I mean, he really took, ah, that's nice and tight, right? So. He really took to his mom right away, but not so much to me. It took him a long time to uh, to get closer to me. So let me grab the keys really quick and start this girl. So you want to check that they're nice and tight, right? And then let's see if this battery is actually charged. So it is a 310 amps, right? I think the other, his was like, I don't know what it was. I'll look at it right now. It's 310, exactly. So that's good. He doesn't have any stereo or extra lighting or anything on here. So that's actually really good. So I'm gonna work on my checklist right now and then I'll get back to you guys. I'm gonna actually take this girl out again today. So here's Leo guys. He's the one that's been with us for 
since May of last year, 2023. So it's been a year and a couple months. And like I said, he's an amazing dog, but he is just so jealous and he's just so aggressive that he's been attacking Loki. And they had never really hurt each other, but he uh, he bit Loki's ear really bad. Come here, Papa. And Loki got his leg. I don't know if you guys can see the leg, the marks on his leg right there. Yeah. And see that? And they got each other pretty bad. His leg was pretty swollen. And so I've had dogs all my life, guys, and I've never experienced anything like this. I know that Loki was, I mean, Leo was with us for a year before Loki came. Loki's been with us for 11, no, eight, nine weeks. And uh, he's just really timid because Leo let him know that, you know, I'm the alpha here. I've been here for a year now and you're new here. This is my house. This is my mom. This is my daddy. And this is my yard. He will not let Loki play with any toys. He, um... He just punks them all the time. I don't know any other way to say it. You know, it just reminds me of being in prison where, you know, the young or younger timid guy comes in and the guy that's been there for a while and he ends up coming to his, to his uh, cell. You know, he's just, this is my cell. Things go the way I go and let, until the, the respect kicks in and the guy earns his respect. Well, Loki is just, now so afraid to even be by Leo because you know he gets that razor back hair stands up in the in his back and his tail goes up and his he just gets you could see he's in that attack mode and he's just ready to attack all the time so they hurt each other pretty bad this last time and so now we've been keeping them separate you know Loki's in the house right now Leo is in his kennel Loki wanted to go in. I went in to grab the keys for uh, my brother's bike and Loki ran in the house. When I try to come back outside, he doesn't want to come outside. All Leo has to do is just look at him and he'll turn away and stay that way for a long time. And then Leo, Leo will eventually go around him. And if he doesn't acknowledge Leo in any way, he attacks him. So I ordered some muzzles today and I ordered one of those little supersonic carrying things on Amazon. I don't know what else to do, man. Are you guys getting along? Can you guys be nice to each other? It's because they're not by either of us. Yeah. When you guys are alone, it's just you two, you guys are fine. But the minute I bring you in the house. So my wife and I have been watching a lot of Caesar Milan to try to get to know these dogs, right? The Dog Whisperer. And we've learned a lot of good stuff on there, but no matter what, I mean, as far as training goes with, you know, Leo does not want to submit. He acts like he's submitting. He plays the role. He lays down and he puts his head back and his feet in the air, but he's not submitting. He's, you know, and Loki's so tense now that it's, it's like laying a bull down. He doesn't want to submit. And if you lay him down, he's like, you know, like all like amped up and he stiffens his whole body and you can't turn him over. Even if you pick him up to try to turn him over, he will fight you tooth and nail. But my wife has been working with him more and more. And I, you know, we've talked about that. She had never really acknowledged Loki before because Leo is always by her and Loki's always by me. So now that she's actually working with Loki, Leo has been attacking him more and more the last few days. So I know that this could be fixed. Anything could be fixed, but we just need some help. So anybody out there of you guys that know anything about these guys or know how to get two brothers to stop fighting, man, I'd appreciate any help you can offer. Ah, hey guys, I want to apologize too because I just, I realized when I was making this video that I somehow accidentally deleted the part where I use my bungee cord, my rubber bungee cord to hook each side of the battery and pull it out. So that's all I was trying to do. And so I didn't need to use it to put this battery in because it was really light. So my apologies for that. And I also wanted to say, this is just how I do it. I never change a battery without brushing the battery off and brushing the cables off and cleaning everything, getting all the corrosion off. A lot of people just, they just don't do it like that. And it just, your battery gets corroded right away and it gets, uh, depending on where you live, the moisture and everything. And 
you know, it's the connection. You lose a connection and, you know, so battery maintenance is, is, is huge on your bikes, man. So just stay on top of it, do your best. And if you're not riding your bike, like I have not been able to ride my bikes lately, always keep them on the tender. You know, it helps the battery stay charged and uh, keeps the bike ready. So whenever you're ready to go, even if it's two, three months down the road, you can start it when you, you're ready to take off and go. So, hey guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, I had a knee replacement like 10 weeks ago and uh, I haven't really been able to come out here and work on anything. So I've just been working with the stuff that I had previously recorded, but I got some minor things that uh, I wanna work on now that I'm able to stand up for a little while. I like my brother-in-law's uh, bags. I still have, have his bags. I'm sure he really wants them. So got a video of that that I started and I'm gonna be uh, finishing them up here pretty soon. But uh, hey, if you guys have not entered my uh, current giveaway, my first giveaway that I've been trying to do, do me a favor, man. Head over to my website, check out my uh, hats and my t-shirts. There's several different colors, six different color hats. You're not actually buying the hat or the t-shirts that are available. You're actually entering, the money is actually going to one of the bikes. This guy right here and that guy right there. So that's what you're actually entering. Yeah, you're spending $100, but you're actually entering to win a $16,000 or a $20,000 bike. I have 16 grand in it, so they're probably worth that, if not more. 2009 Ultra, 2010 Street Glide. I've gone through them all. Check out the videos. They run excellent. They're beautiful, freshly painted, good quality paint on them. All Harley parts that are on them. Yeah, man, check out the videos. All you gotta do is buy a hat or a t-shirt or multiple, and that's your automatic entry into the current giveaway. I have 93 slots left, so man, do me a favor, man. Take a chance, enter this giveaway, and as soon as those 93 items are sold out, we are going to go ahead and give one of these bikes. Here's some short videos for you to check out of both bikes. You can see them and you can hear them running, and pretty soon I'm gonna be doing some more videos on them, hopefully next month. I'm, trying to strengthen up my leg. I think I've been in therapy now for three weeks. And so, yeah, man, let's get this going. Other than that, you guys always remember to ride safe, take care in everything you do, love on your families, and God bless, peace. So let's start these girls up. Beautiful sapphire here. Go around the other side, make sure she's in neutral. She's in neutral. Wish you guys could hear the uh, Vance and Hines eliminators that are on here. This girl sounds absolutely wonderful. Check this girl out. Ted Street Glide, we're in neutral. And you can see, man, a lot of work went into both of these bikes. And uh, let's start this girl up. It's your choice to win either one of these beautiful bikes. Absolutely stunning, man. They are absolutely stunning. But I just wanted to get this video out for you guys. 